everybody. Today, Gordon and I are going to teach you about all the features of a rational function. So, here is an example of a rational function and we're going to talk about how to find the holes, how to find the vertical and the horizontal asymptotes, how to find the intercepts, and then finally how to do the domain and range. So we have a lot to cover for this one example. Before we do anything with rational functions, we have to have it in factored form. That way we can see if there's going to be a hole, and we also can see some other features as well. So before we do this, we need to make sure and put this in factored form. If you can't remember how to factor, refer back to one of my videos on how to factor by the Xbox method or by grouping. All right, so when you factor it, it is going to be 2x plus 3 and x minus 3 for the numerator. When you factor the denominator, it'll be x minus 3 times x plus 2. So now that we have it in factored form, the first thing we're going to look for is to see if there's any holes. How you know if there's a hole is if you notice that there is a factor that is matching in the numerator and in the denominator. What is Gordon doing? Gordon, that's a little bit too much. I know you love rational functions, but there you go, buddy. Okay. so. We are going to cancel out the common factor, x minus 3, and since x minus 3 set equal to 0 would be 3, that tells us, Gordon, you still with me? Oh, he's okay? All right, so we have 3 is going to be the x part of the intercept. Okay, you ready to find the, <laughs> the y part? Okay, so to find the y part, you're going to take 3 and you're going to plug in what's left of the function. So if I plug in 3 right here, 2 times 3 is 6 plus 3 is 9. So the top is going to be 9. And if I plug in 3 here, 3 plus 2 is 5. That is the y part of our hole. So whenever we draw our graph, we're going to have a hole there at 3, 9, 5. All right, now let's talk about how to find the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote only depends on what's left in the denominator. We do not care about the whole that was canceled out, okay? So only thing that's left in the denominator is x plus two. We're gonna set that equal to zero, and that will be negative two, which tells us that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two because that's what made the denominator undefined. Because we know we can't divide by zero, so we know we have an asymptote there. So let's go ahead and draw that asymptote in at negative two. X equals negative two, we're gonna have an asymptote there. That's what we know so far. And we also know in our graph that we have the hole at three, nine, five. And that's a little more than one, one point something. So three and a little past one. How we denote a hole is we just draw an open circle. We know we're going to have a hole in our graph there. So that's all we know about our graph so far. Next part is to find the horizontal asymptote. There are three possible cases for a horizontal asymptote. So how we find the horizontal asymptote is we look at the degree of the numerator and we look at the degree of the denominator. We notice that both of the highest degree is 2 for this polynomials, these two polynomials. And so when they're the same degree, we divide the leading coefficient. So we're going to divide 2 by the 1 that's implied here, which tells us that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So this is the case when we have the same degree polynomial in the numerator and the denominator. If by chance you have a polynomial that has a higher degree, for example, let's say you had an x squared over an x, you had a higher degree in the numerator, then in that case, we call this top heavy. And so there is no horizontal asymptote in this case. No horizontal asymptote. If you have the case where the bottom is heavy, that would be a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. So those are the three possible cases. In this case, they happen to be the same and so we have a horizontal asymptote of 2. What do you think about that, Gordon? Y equals, a, a, y equals 2? He agrees. All right, let's move on to intercepts. To find x-intercepts, 
Well, let's go ahead and draw this asymptote in before we do the intercept here. So I'm going to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2 right there. So to find our intercepts, we know that if it is crossing the x-axis, then we know anywhere on this line, y has to be equal to 0. So if y has to be equal to 0, then I could write this polynomial as 0 equals, and I'm taking what's remaining of the function, 2x plus 3 and x plus 2. So if I know what x is here, if I solve this equation, I would have my x-intercept because I'm saying that y is 0. Well, I could, since this is a division symbol, I could multiply by this, which cancels out the denominator. And I'm left with this. So all I have to do is figure out what x is. Well, I can minus 3, 2x, divide by 2. So that tells me that I have an x-intercept at negative 3 halves 0, or negative 1.5. All right, so I have a point here now at negative 1.5, 0. We know we have a point there. We can kind of see our, our um, rational piece coming into play here. We think we're going to have a piece right here. But let's get our y-intercept to see if we can get a little more information. Okay, so to find y-intercepts, it's very similar to finding x-intercepts. Notice, for the x-intercept, y had to be 0, so therefore, to find the y-intercept, x has to be 0. So I'm going to plug 0 into my remaining function for both x's, and that will give us the y-intercept. So 2 times 0 plus 3 for the numerator, and then 0 plus 2 in the denominator. So that comes out to 3 over 2. Therefore, my y-intercept is 0, 3 halves, or 1.5. So let's plot that. 0, 1.5 is right there. So we can clearly see we are going to have a piece of our rational function getting closer and closer and closer to this asymptote and getting closer and closer to this asymptote. And it's going through the whole and two intercepts. So we know we are going to have another piece up here because they are generally opposite from one each other for rational functions, but let's do a test point just to confirm that we have our other piece in this quadrant right here. All right, as you can see, Gordon is super excited that we have graphed the per first part of our rational function. So now all we have left to graph is to find where the other piece of the rational function is going to go. Since we have no information, more information, we're going to do a test point over to here to see if we can get an idea where the graph is going to go. So all I'm going to do is choose a point. This is at negative 2. So from any point over here is going to give us information. So I'm just going to arbitrarily choose negative 3. I'm going to plug negative 3 in for x in our remaining function so we can get a point. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 plus 3 is negative 3 negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. So negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. So that tells us our function has a point at negative 3 and positive 3, which is about right here. So that tells us that we have a graph that is going to be in this part of the graph. We know it's going to get closer and closer to this asymptote and closer and closer to this asymptote as well. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about now that we have a good idea where the graph is, is we're going to talk about what the domain and range would be. Remember, domain is all the x values that are represented in this graph. Well, the x's are going to keep going as far to the left as negative infinity. And working our way this way, it's going to skip over negative 2. It's undefined here at negative 2 so we, because we have an asymptote there. So we're going to skip over negative 2. I'm going to erase this so I have a little more room. But then it's going to pick up again at negative 2. I'm using this u. This u means union because there's more than one part to this domain. So it skips over negative 2. But it also skips over positive 3 because we have a hole here. So we need to note that it goes from negative 2 to 3, 
and then after it goes over the whole at three, it will go on to infinity. So this describes all the x values in this graph. Now let's talk about the range. Well, the range is going on to negative infinity. And as we travel up, we hit an as oh, actually first we're gonna hit the hole on the y's because my hole was at nine fifths. Nine fifths was the y part of the hole. So we're gonna hit the hole. And then it, after the hole, it will continue on, and then it's gonna hit the asymptote at y equals two. And then from two, it will go on to infinity. So that's all the parts of a rational function. There's a lot of pieces, so you really need to practice these and to really become familiar with all the pieces of a rational function. Thanks for joining us today, Gordon. I hope you had fun. Does he look like he's gonna bite me? No, he won't bite you. But Get he's your... licking me. Pause for just a second. He's what is he doing? He's... Whoa, it feels weird on the back of my neck. <laughs> is he okay? He's kind of squeezing tight. <laughs> is he gonna hurt me? No. Are we ready to go? Wait, he's right here. Gordon. Gordon, this is okay. Right here, buddy. All right. I can't do this. <laughs> this is my hand burns. <laughs> Can you like okay. get him to like sleep right here? Okay. Where'd he go? He's on top of your head. <laughs> Gordon, this is a lot of love. Gordon, you're hugging me too tight right now. <laughs> Gordon, <laughs> you have to pause for a second. He's trying to kill me. Yeah. He hasn't eaten in a while. Is he gonna try to eat me? Can you do anything about the tightening? He's, gonna, he's trying to kill me. <laughs> okay, now he's going back to where he was. I think he's eating my ear. No, he's trying to eat it. Oh, he's tightening now. 